what fund markets are expecting we're joined by mark bailey from sig securities mark a very good morning to you really appreciate you joining us um let's start off with the fed because it kicked off its two-day meeting um and you know what well, is due to kick off i should say um th there's no one really expecting any change at this meeting is there i mean it's all going to be about the promissory note statements there any clues on, on their their next move yeah, good morning, Leanne. I think that's exactly right. I think the market's likely in for a move in uh, in July is only around about 10%. Um, but I think, as you, as you rightly point out, I think it will be all about the commentary. Um, and I think it will be you know, largely focused on whether or not um, they believe that the US labor market is improving. Uh, they'll probably be reasonably happy that that May figure was just a blip rather than a, a weak trend. Um, and I, but I think in terms of the inflation expectations, that will be largely unchanged. I think there'll be a bit of commentary in terms of how the markets have rebounded uh, after Brexit, and they'll be take some comfort um, from that fact. So I think the, mar uh, the, the, the FOMC uh, statements will position the market again, once again, for that future rate hike. And it could even reposition itself for a hike in September rather than later in the month, uh, later in the year. In terms of that uh, September hike and what it's like in the market, that's around about 27% in terms of the futures pricing, and that increases to around about a 50% chance of a hike by year end. So we're kind of almost back to the levels that we saw, especially for the December hike uh, probability, as the same pricing as before Brexit. So the markets have rebounded. Again, the big caveat, as we always expect with the Fed, is that uh, any move will be data dependent. So that will be their kind of get out of jail free card if data doesn't uh, uh, kind of uh, come in, in line with expectation and still showing a, a decent recovery in the U.S. economy. And I think as well, the, the Fed will be uh, obviously focused on the corporate earnings as well that will come out over the next few weeks before that September meeting. So I think all in all, I think there'll be, there will be no change, but the, the statement will again start to position that market for expecting that hike uh, later on in the year. And it could even surprise the market a bit, maybe expecting a hike in September if we get some strong wording uh, in that statement. Mm. Well, certainly off the back of sort of a recent string of stronger data, and it se seems like that September meeting is live. Uh, we were speaking with Teddy Weisberg, one of our earlier guests from Seaport Securities in New York, about his expectations, and he actually thinks that we might have to wait a little longer than September. Let's take a quick listen. In terms of interest rates, you know, we, we've been once again talking about it. It seems like for as long as we've been talking to each other. And uh, from my perspective, the Fed, in spite of all the rhetoric, the, the Fed continues to be on hold. You know, we have a national election in, uh, in November. Certainly, it's reasonable to assume the Fed will do nothing about interest rates between now and the election. So that gets you to early November. So the very earliest, you know, that puts us sometime in December. So... Teddy Weisberg, taking a little bit of a, I guess, a different stance to you, Mark. Is it, do you think it's, you know, there's any chance that the Fed could actually wait until after the presidential elections in November to raise rates? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, in, in terms of, in terms of my expectation, I think probably September is, is too soon, and you know, I think we're looking towards the back end of the year, if at all. Um, you know, the, as we've said time and time again, the Fed's preference in terms of positioning that market is to potentially expect the hike and then not hike rather than, than kind of position the market not for a move and then actually hiking because that would really spook the market and, uh, and give investors a bit of uh, uh, kind of nervousness around any kind of future decision. So I think, you know, in terms of uh, Teddy, who's an absolute market legend, uh, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, he's, he's exactly right. And that's what we've seen, you know, back in 2014, 2015, in terms of that positioning of, of the market by the Fed. You know, this, this, this is almost very similar to what we saw back in 2014, where the, uh, the Fed was positioned for the hike. It didn't actually come through. And then again and again, you know, has the meetings and then nothing actually happened. So that is exactly the right way. And I think Janet Yellen will again position that market with the statement and, and her comments as well. Uh, and the, the, the other Fed, uh, regional Fed governors as well will again be saying, look, you know, we should expect be expecting a hike. You know, we said at the start of the year it was four. Now it's kind of probably two pricing in terms of the bleed stop box. And in terms of, uh, you know, that, that, that future path, it is up, but I think it's a very, very uh, kind of gentle trajectory to higher rates, and that probably means just one hike this year towards the back end. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, I mean, we talk there are market expectations, and we know that long-term bond yields at the moment are at these record low levels. What impact are we seeing in the U.S. Treasury market? Yeah, it's, that's interesting. We have seen the yield kind of back up a bit for in the 10 years from those record lows, as you rightly point out. Um, what is what is interesting, actually, is some of the demand that we're seeing in some of the U.S. Treasury auctions. Uh, there's a 
two-year option uh, overnight, which actually had the, the weakest demand since uh, December 2008 uh, in terms of the bid to cover ratio. Um, you know, property investors just starting to think at these these levels. You know, is there is there demand? Maybe we should be moving you know out uh, into the corporate uh, space to pick up yield. In addition, as well, I think you're you're seeing a bit of uh, reticence in terms of you know whether the Fed does position that market for future hikes. And if the, if that is the case, if the if the statement is a bit more hawkish than is expected in the market, you would ex you would expect to see that two to three year part of the the Treasury curve suffer the worst, and you see the back up in yields uh, be m m mainly impacted in that shorter end. Um, interestingly as well, in terms of that uh, weak demand in, in government and bond markets, you're also seeing uh, a pretty kind of tepid demand for Australian corp uh, Australian government bonds as well from the auctions uh, that we've seen so far in terms of the average that we've seen in, in invest investor demand this year has been at the, uh, the lowest levels, I think, going back to 2002, um, which is, uh, again, probably a sign maybe a bit of the strength of the Aussie dollar. But again, you know, investors are a bit concerned in terms of the global um, macro picture in terms of interest rates and where those yields are, are likely to head uh, in the near term. And again, this all boils back down to central banks and the Fed and the future interest rates in that market for the, uh, for the next hike. Let's talk of the Bank of Japan uh, later on in the week. I mean, just a few weeks ago, there was a lot of speculation that the, the BOJ was considering this helicopter money and that set the yen tumbling. But since then, I mean, a lot of officials have come out denying that sort of radical policy option there and, you know, market expectations have faded. But uh, to some degree, I mean, markets certainly are expecting more stimulus from the BOJ. What do you think we're likely to see there on Friday? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. In terms of the consensus, I think there's around about 32 out of 41 economists are expecting some kind of stimulus with a with the with the most popular, I think, uh, additional buying of equities through ETFs, uh, maybe um, some uh, an interest rate cut as well, uh, and, and or the negative deposit rate uh, further cut by maybe 15 basis points seems to be the general consensus, and even potentially some additional QE in terms of additional government bond buying there as well. So I think um, you know. The market is certainly pricing for additional uh, stimulatory measures from uh, the Bank of uh, Japan's governor. Uh, and but you know, having said that, you know he has disappointed the market previously, and he's also surprised the market on the positive side. So you know there is probably probably a bit of uncertainty around the the meeting on Friday. But I think you know on balance we should see some further stimulus coming out of Japan to try and get that uh, stagnating economy functioning again but it's, it's a very difficult uh, situation over there and they've tried most things but you know time and time again they've said that you know the helicopter money that has been speculated just won't happen um you know i'm, I'm almost kind of wishing it will because it would be a really interesting uh, kind of economic experiment just to see what uh, would actually happen there and whether it would actually work as um as the uh, economists actually think it would do but i think at the moment um, we're not there yet and it's just going to be more of the same in terms of the etfs uh, further interest rate cuts and government bond buying as the, as the most likely contenders. Okay, fantastic. So much to look out for this week. Mark, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Lena. Mark Bailey joining us there from...